Today we're going to answer your question, how to purchase a gun in the state of Florida. Listen, buying a gun in the state of Florida is easy. First off, stop by your local gun shop. Yes, we encourage you to support local businesses. So stop by your local gun shop and purchase a gun. Pretty simple. Now in the state of Florida, to purchase a handgun, you must be a resident of the state of Florida. Uh, to buy any gun, you must be the age of 21. Um, you can buy a long gun if you're not a resident of the state of Florida. Now, let's say you're a snowbird and you reside, let's say in another state somewhere, uh, you live down here part-time. If you can prove that you are a part-time resident, you know, you own property, anything like that, yes, you can purchase a gun, handgun or long gun. Uh, that proof can be um, either government issued ID, it's gonna have your Florida address on it, or some kind of government issued invoice. Um, and listen folks, your bank statement or something like that is not a government issued invoice. Beyond popular belief, the bank is not owned or run by the government. So you gotta prove something, government issued invoice, sometimes the water company is owned by your local county. So that would be a government issued invoice. Uh, your tax documents, property documents, government issued invoice, that would work. Now, with that being said, you come on in, you're of age, you're 21 years of age, you purchase your gun. Again, you must purchase the gun first. Then you're gonna fill out a ATF form 4473. Uh, most of these are done electronically now, it's not done by paper. Usually get an iPad, some kind of tablet or something like that. You fill it out. Um, after you fill that out, the people at the gun shop are gonna take certain information from that. Um, they're gonna plug it into the computer and that's gonna run your background check. Background checks, there's no rhyme or reason how long they take, a couple seconds to a couple hours. Most of the time it's a couple minutes. Plug it into the system and you get an approval or denial. Um, denials, felons, stuff like that. You should know if you should be able to own a gun or not. It's pretty simple. Um, once you are approved, if you have a Florida Concealed Weapons License, you can take the firearm home with you that day. If you do not have that concealed weapons license, why you don't have one, I don't know. Maybe you're just waiting for it to show up in the mail. You have to wait three full business days before you can take the gun home. And yes, that's business days. They don't count weekends. They don't count holidays. Um, that's just a cool down period. Pretty simple. Three days, easy. So again, you purchase the gun, you fill out that form, you pass the background check, you don't have the concealed weapons license, you're waiting three business days to take the gun home. Easy, you have the Florida concealed weapons license, you can take it home that day. Now let's say you are a snowbird, you have a concealed weapons license from your other state that you reside in, that concealed weapons license is not gonna be good to take that gun home. We might have reciprocity with that state. Um, let's say it's Georgia, just using that as an example. Um, that concealed weapons license does not give you the right to take the gun home that day. It must be the Florida concealed weapons license. Sorry, don't make the laws, don't enforce them. Just gotta follow with that. Now, uh, we highly encourage that you do get the Florida Concealed Weapons License. Simple process, get it. Uh, I'd rather have it, not need it, than need it, not have it. Now, gifting a gun. Are you allowed to gift a gun to somebody? Yes and no, it's a, tr a tricky situation there. Let's say you wanna buy a gun for your spouse. Yes, you can gift your spouse a gun. Easy, come on in, buy him a gun, give it to him for Christmas, whatever it's gonna be, who cares? Uh, you wanna buy a gun for your kid? Yes, you can do that. Um, I suggest so, especially current events going on, if you're buying a gun for a minor, um, you control that gun. You secure it, secure it you lock it up. Um, don't give them full access to the firearm. Make sure they only have access with, to the firearm when you're around. Now, where you can't really gift a gun, where I'd really be cautious, um, let's say you want to buy a coworker or a neighbor a gun, which they better be a really good neighbor or coworker if you're buying them a gun. But... At that point in time, that could almost be considered a straw purchase. Um, ATF's kind of weird on that one. Um, I'll go over straw purchase in a second. In a situation like that, let's say you're gonna buy a friend, a neighbor, something like that, a gun. What I would do at that time, go purchase the gun at the gun shop or something like that. Say, hey, I wanna buy him this gun. Buy it, give him a gift card for it, do whatever. Have them come in and actually do the background check for the gun. Do that ATF form 4473 for it. Um, that's just releasing you from all liability of that gun. Um, and it's also making sure that that person can legally own and possess that firearm. The last thing you wanna do is pick up a gun for somebody and they can't legally have the gun. Um, we talked about a straw purchase. A straw purchase is basically when you purchase a gun for somebody and you might not, you might buy it for somebody that might not be able to have the gun. Um, 
this would be considered a straw purchase as well. Say you're, um, tell your neighbor, hey, I'm going over to the gun shop to buy a gun. And they say, hey, pick me up uh, whatever, a Glock 19, uh, I'll pay you when you get home. And you pick it up for them, do the background check, go home, and then they give you the money for it. That's technically a straw purchase. You can get in a lot of trouble for that. Um, you would get in trouble, neighbor would get in trouble. If the gun shop knew what you were doing, they would get in trouble. Do not do that. Um, there are cases out there too where spouses can get in trouble for small, uh, uh, straw purchases. Ugh, can't talk this morning. But a spouse can get in trouble. Let's say your spouse is a felon, but they want a gun. And they tell you, hey, honey, go to the store, buy me this gun. And you go and do it and you give it to them, that would be a straw purchase. So be careful with that stuff. Buying guns online. Even if you buy a gun online from your local store. Listen, the three-day wait that we talked about previously, the three-day wait starts the moment you put money down on that gun, that you start the transaction for that firearm. So let's say you're on our website, the gun shop online, and you want to purchase a SIG 365, whatever, and you don't have your concealed weapons license. The minute you buy it off our website, it starts your three-day wait. So we know a lot of you are busy. It's that time of year, and you don't have time to sit in the gun shop all day long. You can purchase that firearm from the website, start your three-day wait, Wait the three days and give us a call. We'll tell you exactly when you can come in to pick it up. Then come in, do your background check, take the gun home that day. Saves a lot of time. Now let's say you buy a gun off of Gun Broker or something like that or from an online retailer somewhere and you have a transfer to us. Remember, you buy it online from somewhere, uh, they can't mail it to your house. The unpopular belief what some of our politicians try to tell us. They're gonna send it to a local gun shop and they do what's called a transfer. Um, it's gonna come here. Transfer, you come in and do the background check, blah, 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 blah. Everything's fine and dandy. There's still a three-day wait. If you cannot prove to us when you bought it, the three-day wait's going to start when you come in. So please, when you buy something like that, keep the original uh, receipt that you have when you purchased it, the email, whatever it's going to be. Um, a lot of times that retailer's not going to send it to us. And to be honest, we're not searching through the boxes and all that looking for your receipt. We're looking for the documents that we need from that dealer to put it in our books and do everything legal that we need to do, we're not searching for your receipts. So keep a hold of that stuff, bring it in and say, hey, I bought this last week online from this company. Great, fine, three days is up, take it with you. Trust me, we don't want to store the stuff longer than we have to. Um, hopefully this answered some of your questions about purchasing a gun. Um, for our out-of-state residents, let me add this. If you're going to come in, let's say you find a long gun that you like, you want to buy, make sure it's legal back in your home state. The last thing you want to do is buy a gun here then go to take it home and realize it's not legal there. Uh, you'd be surprised how many times this happens and we'll, people buy guns online or that will sell on auction sites or on our personal website and we ship it to the dealer in that state and the gun's not legal in that state. Listen, it's up to you. So be careful with that. <laughs> know your laws. Uh, we can't know the laws in all 50 states. So hopefully we answered your questions. If you have any more questions, please feel free to give us a call, uh, send us an email, a private message, put the comments below, whatever it's going to be. Let us know, and uh, hopefully we can answer them for you. Folks, have a great day.